morning. Welcome to Children's Ministry at the Fort Bend Church. I'm Ms. Deirdre. time. Let us pray. Dear God, please hear our prayer. We praise your holy name. We thank you for your love. We thank you, God, for Jesus, who died on the cross for our sins. Dear God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the Bible and our church. We thank you for our pastor and our parents. We thank you for our teachers and our friends. We love you, God, our Father. Dear God, help us to obey you and make you smile. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let's stand and sing, This Is The Day. In today's Bible story, Nehemiah was living in a foreign land. When he heard that there was trouble in his homeland of Jerusalem, he wanted to help. The walls around the city had been broken apart. God chose Nehemiah to lead the people to rebuild the walls around the city. We all have choices like Nehemiah. We obey or we choose to disobey like the people in today's story. They chose to disobey God over and over again, and God allowed an army to capture them. Then after many years, God let them return, but they discovered that the walls around the city were broken apart. God chose Nehemiah to lead the people to repair the walls. We have learned that there were a few good kings, but many of them were bad and led the people to worship false gods. God sent prophets like Isaiah and Zechariah to warn the people to stop sinning, but they did not. God allowed his people to be prisoners in a place called Babylon for 70 years. Finally, God let them return to Jerusalem where they discovered that much of the city had been damaged or destroyed. Today's story is from the book of Nehemiah chapters 1 through 7. Nehemiah was a real person who lived a long time ago. You know, all the stories in the Bible, they fit together to tell a bigger story. It tells us the big story of how God rescued sinners through his son, Jesus. Today's Bible story is called Nehemiah Rebuilt the Wall. 
everyone, I'm Megan. And I am Mr. Fix-It-All Jesse. Well, hey there, Mr. Fix-It-All Jesse. It looks like you have some important things in your tool belt. Why, yes I do, Megan. I have tape, I have glue, and of course, string cheese. Uh, string cheese? I mean, I know the glue and the tape can help fix things, but why do you need string cheese? Because I never know when I'll need a snack after doing all that hard work. Ah, <laughs> you are right, Jesse. Fixing and rebuilding things takes a lot of hard work. In today's Bible story, Nehemiah worked to rebuild the broken walls and gates in Jerusalem. That sounds like a big job. I don't think my tape or glue could fix a broken wall. <laughs> Yeah, it was a really big job, Jesse, but Nehemiah wasn't alone. God helped Nehemiah and a group of people rebuild the walls in Jerusalem. Wow, God is always there to help us, but how did God help them rebuild the walls? That's a great question, Jesse. Watch closely to see how God helped Nehemiah rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. God's people had been freed from Babylon, but not everyone went home to the land of Judah. Nehemiah was one of God's people. He had an important job serving the king of Persia. One day, some men came from Judah. Nehemiah asked them, how are God's people doing? The people are in trouble, they said. The walls around the city are broken apart and the gates have been burned down. Nehemiah cried and prayed to God when he heard this bad news. The king saw that Nehemiah was sad. What's wrong, Nehemiah? The king asked. Nehemiah said, the city where my family is from is in trouble. The walls around the city are broken and the gates have been burned down. So the king sent Nehemiah to Jerusalem to rebuild the city. In Jerusalem, Nehemiah led the people to rebuild Jerusalem's wall and fix the gates in the wall. Everyone in the city worked together on the walls. Before long, the wall was halfway rebuilt. Some men who lived nearby did not like God's people and they did not want them to have new walls to keep them safe. The men made fun of God's people and made a plan to attack them. Nehemiah did not want the people to be afraid. God is great and powerful, Nehemiah said. If our enemies attack us, God will fight for us. So God's people kept working. Some of the men stood guard with weapons and others worked on the wall. The people were always ready to fight, just in case. Nehemiah was a good leader for God's people. He helped them when they had problems, and he told them to trust God. Before long, the wall was finished. The gates and the walls were fixed, and God's people were safe. The people's enemies were afraid because they knew that God was with his people. Nehemiah helped God's people fix the walls around their city. The walls protected the people from their enemies. Jesus protects us from our enemies. When we know and love Jesus, he keeps us safe from sin and we will live with him forever. Our Christ Connection tells us that Nehemiah helped God's people fix the walls around their city. The walls protected the people from their enemies. Jesus protects us from our enemies. When we know and love Jesus, he keeps us safe from sin and we will live with him forever. Let's review our story. Nehemiah led the men to rebuild the walls around Jerusalem. Strong walls around the city would protect God's people from their enemies. Nehemiah reminded the people that God is the powerful protector who would fight their enemies for them. Jesus is our powerful protector that keeps us safe from the consequences of sin 
when we choose to trust in him. God's people sinned against him over and over again. Whenever bad things happened to God's people because of their sin, a prophet helped them understand that they should feel sorry for their sin and repent. Godly grief can do that for you and for me. Godly grief helps us to understand that we need to repent and we need a savior. And that savior is Jesus. Say this, we need Jesus. Now let's repeat the key passage. Now repeat the key passage after me. Godly grief produces a repentance that leads to salvation without regret. 2 Corinthians 7, verse 10. Let's sing the key passage song, Godly Grief, and then I pray song.
Keep singing the Key Passage song this week because it's a great way for us to help us remember God's word. We have been learning that God sent prophets to tell his people that they were sinning and needed to repent. The people were sad about their sin and tried to turn back to God, but soon they forgot about him again. Many years later, God made a better way by sending Jesus. Our big picture question asks, how should we feel when we sin? The answer says, when we sin, we should feel sorry that we have disobeyed God and choose to obey him. That feeling of sorrow helps us to understand that we have disobeyed God. The good news is that Jesus took the punishment for our sin so we can live with him forever. Our missions moment tells us that missionaries Stephen and Aaron Spencer met an older woman named Moma who lived in a Southeast Asian village. The Spencers told Moma about Jesus and she believed in him. One day, a woman in the village got sick. She had to stay in bed for a long time and her body hurt. The woman's husband asked Moma to pray. She prayed that God would heal the woman and God did. The next day, the woman walked out of her house. She believed in God as well. Everyone in the village knew how sick the woman had been. Only God could have healed her so quickly. Many people wanted to know more about God, but others were still unsure. Now, let's close in prayer. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for the Bible. Thank you for sending men to help God's people repent. Thank you most of all for Jesus the one who keeps us safe from sin so that we can live with him forever. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. Now, work on your activity page with an adult. This week, I want you to pray that the people in Southeast Asia will come to know God and pray for MoMA and the Spencers as they tell people about Jesus. Remember, subscribe to the Fort Bend Church YouTube channel like and share this week's video. Have a wonderful week. Bye.